Some of the coolest watches in the world have some major flaws. So for all of their greatness and popularity, these points often get overlooked and mean that some buyers are left feeling a bit disappointed. Although all of the watches featured in today's video are incredible timepieces, they also have some questionable features that should be considered if you want to pick one up. You guys loved the first episode where we covered 10 very popular watches. So here we are today covering 10 enthusiast watches that can sometimes suck to own. I actually picked up my first ever G-Shock just a couple of months ago. I avoided them for years, thinking that they'd be too big for my tiny wrist. But after hearing tons of positive reviews online about how the Casio works on a smaller wrist, I decided to finally give in to the hype and try one out. There are tons of different Casio models to choose from, plenty of different colour, module and material options. One thing I did notice when shopping to buy mine was that some of the models are, well, pretty poorly designed. This is because certain models have such a monochromatic colour scheme that it makes the legibility of the dial extremely difficult. Take the GA2100FF for example, an all grey watch that is almost impossible to read at a glance. The same can also be said for the skeleton metallic models too. Even the standard all black Casio isn't the most legible watch in the world. And for such a good watch, why the hell is it so hard to read the time? Some watches on YouTube gain so much popularity they rival the likes of Rolex with the amount of eyeballs on the watch. This of course is a great thing for the watch brand. But when they mess up the successor to said watch, it leaves watch enthusiasts feeling scammed like paying $100 just to fill up your car. The Seiko SKX is an affordable watch icon, however it now belongs in the graveyard of amazing watches that are no longer in production. And since Seiko discontinued the SKX, it has tripled in price. So naturally when an SKX replacement was announced, fans were excited. But the newer model doesn't come close to the original. The original SKX was an ISO certified 200 meters diver's watch, a proper tool watch. The new replacement Seiko SRPD range may share all of the SKX DNA but falls way short in the specification department. It no longer has a screw down crown, 200 meters water resistance or the ISO certification, which sucks knowing that the watch you own is a shadow of what once was. Swiss watches are held in such high regards by watch enthusiasts, with the likes of Tissot, Hamilton, Hamilton and Satina ruling the entry level market. But the cheapest Swiss automatic watch that you can buy is actually by Swatch. However, this one has one humongous flaw when it comes to owning one long term, and I think that this is a deal breaker. Us watch enthusiasts love the idea of a wristwatch lasting us a lifetime. With occasional servicing and good care, your typical modern mechanical wristwatch should outlast everybody watching this video. However, the System 51 by Swatch is unfortunately not built to the occasion. That's because the movement is basically made to be thrown in the bin once it starts to run badly. The System 51 is held together by one singular screw, and the rest of the parts are soldered together, meaning that it is quite literally impossible to service the watch. If you sent the watch to Swatch for a service, they would simply throw the movement in the bin and charge you a hefty fee for the brand new one that they put inside of it. One of the most historic affordable chronographs in the world unfortunately has one huge flaw, which in my opinion stops it from from being one of the most popular watches amongst watch enthusiasts. And the watch brand tried to fix the flaw, but they didn't do a very good job, which is similar to me when I make these videos. Bulliver is one of the only watch brands in the world that can boast that they had a watch on the surface of the moon. Omega will have you believe that the Speedmaster is the only moon watch, but this is incorrect. The Bulliver Lunar Pilot is also a genuine moon watch too. And the best part is, it's substantially more affordable than the Speedy. Unfortunately, though the Lunar Pilot is the size of a modern dinner plate, with a 45mm case diameter and a 52mm lug to lug, which could work if the designers of the case made the lugs wrap around the wrist. This didn't happen though, and the Lunar Pilot is as flat as a freshly made pepperoni pizza. The Lunar Pilot wears astronomically large and even the new smaller version is still too big for most. One watch that seems to pop up more than pimples on a teenager's face is the Seiko Flightmaster, a genuine aviation watch watch that looks like someone threw up a mathematics textbook all over the dial. But for all its greatness, the Flightmaster features one huge flaw when it comes to ownership. The Seiko Flightmaster is a watch that I've considered buying more times than I'm happy to mention. But there's one thing that puts me off every time I'm about to click the button. First of all, the supplied bracelet is bad. It looks awkward on the case and the polished links look out of place. So just put a strap on it, right? Well, that's where we meet the main flaw. The Flightmaster comes with a super 
super awkward 21mm lug width, so finding an aftermarket strap is a mission in itself. But hang on, even when you do find one, it will likely not fit the case. Because the Flightmaster has the closest spring bars to the case you will likely ever see on a watch, making the Flightmaster a massive pain in the ass when it comes to strap options. Mechanical chronograph watches typically cost upwards of a thousand dollars, so an enthusiast like myself would turn to quartz where it tends to be a lot cheaper. One of the more popular options is the Mecha Quartz movement. This combines the reliability of quartz with a mechanical feel, but it has one very annoying feature. Now the part of the Mecha Quartz movement that sucks may not be an issue to you, but to others this will be super annoying. The Seiko VK64 that can be found inside a lot of the more popular Mecha Quartz chronographs is a great movement, but when looking at the dial it looks like it has less life than the surface of Mars. This is because the movement features no running seconds hand, meaning that if the chronograph isn't running, the watch just looks dead inside. This is my Yemerali graph, a stunning sports chronograph with the VK64 movement. I love the look of this watch, but sometimes when I look at it, I feel a sudden urge to give it CPR to bring it back to life. There aren't many good dive watches that exist for under $100, with most either having terrible build quality or not even having 200 meters of water resistance. So when a watch comes along and smashes both of those factors, watch enthusiasts take note and it becomes a very popular watch. This can be said for the Casio Juro, a super popular dive watch amongst affordable watch collectors. The watch features a classic dive watch design and a great build quality for around $70. However, there is one part of the Juro that sucks. The Casio Juro unfortunately comes with a monstrous 44mm case, seemingly made to be strapped to a bicep rather than a wrist. So unless you either like wearing a large watch or have the wrists to support the size and weight, it tends to wear way too big. And it's a shame that Casio don't just release a 40mm Juro. It is such a well-built watch, but it's just so massive. Also, why the hell does it have such small hands? At least make them in proportion with the huge dial Casio. I love it when a watch comes with a really good bracelet, especially when it suits the style of the watch too. I also enjoy a modern clasp that has plenty of micro adjustment. However, there is one type of clasp that I absolutely hate and find it near impossible to work with. There's nothing that sucks more in my opinion than having a super cool watch on your wrist that is held together by a butterfly class. I really do hate these things. They offer no level of micro adjustment, so you'll likely never find a good fit. Even if you do, throughout the year when your wrist swells and shrinks, you'll have no way to fine tune the wearability, leaving you with a tough choice of either wearing the watch slightly loose or slightly tight. I know that they look more elegant than a regular class, but come on, I've never ever managed to find a good fit with a butterfly clasp, and of all the clasp options, they are the least safe too. My Tissot Day Date fell off my wrist once because the clasp accidentally opened. One of the most popular mechanical dress watches was actually released back in 2017, and has since become a massive hit in mechanical watch collections. It's known for its elegant beauty and classical sizing, but unfortunately the beauty is only skin deep on this watch. The Timex Marlin is a dress watch with a rich history. Originally released in the 60s, but re-released just a few years ago. The one huge drawback of the modern Marlin though lies beneath the case back. The watch features the mechanical hand-wound Seagull ST6 movement, which on paper sounds fine, but this is the cheapest mechanical movement that you'll find around. The Marlin has plenty of complaints when it comes to reliability, all down to the ST6 movement. It seems that Timex went for the cheapest possible mechanical movements that they could find so don't expect much when it comes to the heart of this watch. In fact, it's possible to buy the movement brand new for around $15. So although the specs of the watch sometimes look good on paper, brands sometimes cheapen out with the things that you can't see. Now I love switching up the straps on my watch and changing up the style, but some watches make it near impossible to find a good strap that matches the watch well. And it is such a shame when the watch is so bloody good. One of my biggest pet peeves is when a watch has a super small look lug width in comparison with the case size. This can mostly be seen on some of Casio's most popular models. Take the beloved Casio Royale for example. The watch features a 42mm case diameter but only an 18mm lug width, so when you swap out the pretty poor bracelet, which you'll likely want to do, for a different strap, you're left with a watch that just looks odd. The 18mm strap makes the Royale look ridiculously top heavy, like the watch doesn't belong on the strap. And if you put it on 
the NATO, it looks like it has been left out to dry on a washing line. And straps that flare out at the lug openings tend to be more expensive than the actual watch. Remember to check out toptierticker.com for the very best in affordable pre-owned and discontinued watches, link is in the description. If you liked this video and want to hear about some more watches that have major flaws, be sure to watch my video here on screen on 10 amazing watches that suck to own.